Philip. Oh, hello, Chet. How are you? Fine, how are you? Hi. No Bill's around? He's running an errand. Be back in 15 or 20 minutes. I guess I'll wait. Oh, what happened? Did your car go off? No, they're just putting in a new transformer. The neighborhood's growing. That one's been up there a long time. We don't bring these babies down every day. No, sir. The new one doesn't look much bigger. It'll handle twice the load, though. That old transformer's been up there at least 30 years. How can you tell? GE transformers were my bread and butter for a long time. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. How's it feel to be retired? Get out of there, pup. Get out, you little muck, you. Come on. <laughs> Who's retired? <laughs> I'm busier than I've ever been, chasing dogs. <laughs> that was Mrs. Adams' dog. Yeah. What have you been up to this summer, Chet? I've got a job at the airport. Oh, going in for aviation? Mm, electronic. Got a big future. A lot of excitement. There was enough of that in my line to keep me happy. What, in Transformers? You'd be surprised. Did you go out for football last year? Uh-huh. Varsity? Yeah, the, the second string. Well, there you are. I was on the first team. That's why I got a kick out of my job. Oh, I get it. You made the best Transformers. Is that it? They're good ones. But what I'm really driving at is that most of the things that make them good started with GE. My team had the big improvements first. No wonder. They do a lot of research over there. More than anyone in the business. Research makes a difference. Why, well, even the paint on that thing was researched. I used to get a kick out of going over to the lab. They hit on a terrific paint finish just before I left the company. It's called Melaglip. Took a lot of doing. Good finishes don't just happen. We started with a base of GE Glyptol. That's the paint we used successfully on transformers for years. And it's even used on cars. But what we were looking for was a new finish that would take years of weathering without simonizing. Something tough but flexible. They didn't find it overnight. But one day they developed a mixture of GE Glyptol and Melamine. It was called Melaglip. Like I said, it was terrific. In fact, the weatherometer test was stopped cold. Samples of Melaglip, given the equivalent of two years of rain and sunlight, couldn't be told from samples straight from the bake oven. The weathered paint still had all the original color and gloss. Then we gave the samples 200 hours of concentrated salt spray. There was no water absorption, choking, or cracking. There wasn't any loss in its ability to protect. Melaglip can take it. GE has also developed a spraying technique that's just as different as the paint. After carefully cleaning the steel, they put on a Melaglip priming coat. It has a red pigment that resists rust and corrosion, and it stays put. Then, believe it or not, the blue-gray finish coat is sprayed on right away, and the two coats are baked at the same time. They fuse into a perfect bond with each other and with the steel. <laughs> Makes a beautiful job, too. When you get right down to it, though, the real purpose of Melaglip is to save dollars. By developing a long-lasting finish, we help cut maintenance costs to the utilities. Well, they ought to go for that. They've got to. With costs the way they are today, utilities have to save money every way they can, in maintenance and replacement. And that goes for the initial investment, too. One of GE's earliest research goals was to lower transformer prices. We started by looking for better steel for transformer cores. Silicon iron held the most promise. We poured America's first melt of silicon iron in our Lynn, Massachusetts works in 1903. In itself, silicon iron was a big improvement in many ways. But even more important, several years later, 
it led to a vital GE discovery. Our Pittsfield lab found that when a big silicon iron crystal or grain was turned a certain way, magnetic flux whizzed right through without any trouble at all. But there was plenty of trouble when the grain was turned across the flux. More reluctance is the way they put it. No getting around it. Lining up the grain with the flux was better. Then we looked at a piece of typical core steel. We found the crystal grains pointing in every direction. If we could only line up the grains, we could make the core more efficient and build smaller transformers. But how to reach into that steel and turn every grain the way you want it? Well, the answers began to appear eventually. The first one's in England and later in the United States. By a new process of cold rolling and heat treatment, 25% of the grains were put in line, an encouraging beginning. In the next few years, energy loss was cut by 20%. That's when GE stepped in again and started a million dollar research program to do an even better job of making those silicon iron crystals line up. But how to proceed? There was no signpost to show us the way. Using the knowledge available, we began an endless series of experiments. Our Pittsfield metallurgist made melt after melt, playing a hunch that natural impurities in the metals were keeping those crystals from lining up. They removed the impurities one at a time. We forged cast ingots and then cold rolled the steel a hundred different ways to find just how far to go with each step. Tons of metal were annealed under an infinite variety of time, temperature, and atmospheric conditions. And new instruments were developed to check results. For every hit, we had a hundred misses. Took a lot of patience. Too much can't be said for the men at Allegheny Ludlam. They weren't afraid to break traditions and to experiment. And the rest is history. It was the climax of a 50-year search for better transformer steel and lower costs. The oscilloscope told us the grains in the steel were lined up 95%. Magnetic flux had a practically perfect path. The new steel was called Corusel. It's delivered in strip form with the grains lined up the long way. Pretty neat. But Corusel was only one part of the problem. While the metallurgists were developing the new steel, designers were trying to develop a core that would take full advantage of those lined up grains. If Corusel were used in the conventional transformer core, magnetic flux would have to buck grains that were many degrees out of line. That would mean higher energy loss and lower efficiency. Well, things like this always take time, but they found the answer. Taking strips of Corusel, they wound them into a radically new core shape. In this new core, the laminations were in line with the grains. That provided outstanding flux-carrying ability. The engineers called it Spiracore. But to produce Spiracore in mass quantity, the factory had to use precision methods you usually find only in the laboratory. One of the most precise operations is the final annealing and cooling. We do this job right here in Pittsfield to make sure those crystal grains will line up the way we want them. The combination of Spiracore and Corusil cut energy loss to another new low. As a result, distribution transformers are smaller and lighter, so they're easier to install. That's another way research has cut costs to the industry. Of course, no single research achievement can make a transformer tops. Balanced design is the true answer. Everything has to be good. That goes double for transformer oil. It has to be tailored to the job like all the other parts. In most applications, oil may last weeks or months. But in transformers, it's got to last for years. GE has developed an oil that fits transformer requirements to a T. 
The requirements are purity, durability, and resistance to oxidation. To meet them, chemists had to test thousands of combinations. Various inhibitors were tried, and the effects of different insulations were studied. The result is GE's number 10C oil. Service records prove that it does an outstanding job wherever oil-filled transformers are used. But oil as nature gives it to us still poses a problem, fire. There used to be only two solutions to this problem. Make heavy investments in fireproof vaults or set up transformers outside and run expensive secondary lines indoors. A better solution came from the lab. GE research men invented Pyranol. <laughs> Unless you're a chemist, the story of Pyranol may sound like something out of Buck Rogers. Broadly speaking, you take a molecule of diphenyl, replace five hydrogen atoms with five chlorine atoms. Result? a transformer liquid with high dielectric strength that won't sludge or oxidize. But more than that, it won't burn. Paranol is non-flammable. Underwriters have given it full approval. Using Paranol, you can place transformers right inside the factory. But we're not resting on our laurels. The lab men are still juggling those molecules to get something better. They've learned how to get along without two of the heavy chlorine atoms. That still gives them non-flammability with less weight and lower price. Balanced design demands good sealing, too. Time was that tanks were sealed with cork gaskets. It was pretty good, except that every time the transformer was open, the gasket had to be scraped off and replaced. More important, it wasn't airtight. Cork allowed the cover joint to breathe with expansion and contraction of the oil. Air and moisture would get inside and often cause trouble. Obviously, rubber would be an ideal gasket material. Its low porosity would at least put an end to breathing. But hot transformer oil turned ordinary rubber into jelly in a few days. Here was another problem for the research boys at the Pittsfield lab. Well, for a time, the rubber didn't exist that measured up to the dozen-odd requirements of a good transformer gasket. But we kept plugging, testing everything under the sun, until at last, nitrile rubber came along. It gave us a gasket practically unaffected by oil, sunlight, air, dust, and operating temperatures. The gasket simply is set in a groove, and the cover clamped on over it. The back pressure of nitrile rubber fills the joint completely. Even with expansion and contraction, it provides a leak-proof, non-breathing joint. Another reason why GE transformers last longer. Research put GE way ahead in the field of high temperature inorganic insulation for dry type transformers too. The only two fibers suitable for high temperature use have always baffled designers. Fiberglass doesn't have enough give for many uses, and asbestos, in its commercial form, has low dielectric strength. But asbestos looked more promising, so we set to work removing impurities from the fiber, splitting them finer and developing fillers. The result was the first paper-thin inorganic sheet to have high dielectric strength. We call it Terratex. It will withstand the same voltage as the old insulation three times its thickness. So Terratex is going to save space. When heated to 800 degrees centigrade, it still has a dielectric strength of 100 volts per mil of thickness. And because Terratex lasts as long as the metal itself, is going to help cut cost for the power industry. GE's most spectacular work, however, goes on in the new high-voltage laboratory. It costs more than $2 million. It's the biggest single-cost reduction tool we've ever built. Every time I go in that building, I'm amazed all over again. For instance, 
there's a large rolling door at the back of the lab. The largest door of its kind in the world, as a matter of fact. One of the lightning generators can move to an outside testing area. We can test special operators or experiment with the transmission line. You can get an idea of what this new equipment will mean by looking at what came out of our first high voltage lab. Take progressive layer insulation. In any winding, electrical pressure is greater between these points that are several turns apart than these which are close together. Progressive layer insulation provides extra strength exactly where it is needed. Here, 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 and here. That brought a new high in transformer dependability. Another development that came out of the old lab was shielding. A carefully insulated shield was placed around the coils and connected to the line. We charged our lightning generators and fired. The shield prevented dangerous high voltage concentrations by spreading the blow over the whole coil. Result, uninterrupted service. Our work in the new lab is going to be a little different. In one way, transformers are overprotected. For years, manufacturers have added insulation far and above what is needed for a margin of safety. We're trying to find out how to make more effective use of less insulation. Better use of insulation, plus GE's lightning arresters, will give us an even more rugged transformer. Less insulation will help us hold the line on transformer prices. Ever see seven and a half million volts try to smash a transformer out of service? Each bolt of lightning gives us one more bit of the information we need to make better, longer lasting, lower priced transformers. Of course, a lot of the transformers advertised in those magazines have been licensed to use many GE features. But like I said, I got a kick out of my job because it was my team that had them first. So the odds are with the GE customer that he'll get their benefits first. Research makes a difference. Most the important work's been done, though, I imagine. You talk like Bill. Born a hundred years too late, is that it? Well, you know what I mean. Chet? We've barely scratched the surface. There are a lot of other things that need attention. GE sees plenty of work ahead. What work? Knock it off, fellas. This is Saturday. What goes on here? Oh, hiya, Bill. Hello, son. What gives? Oh, your pops are giving me a pep talk on the transformer business. Oh, no. You too? The complete GE laboratory treatment. Fits his style. Oh, come on. Let's get out of here before you get all wound up in this transformer business. Maybe I could do worse. Mm, Uh-oh. And that's my son. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be back to see if that transformer's been holding up the way you say it will. Don't hurry. It'll still be up there when you're an old man. <laughs> okay. Let me take her, Chet. All right, but just keep her under 80. How do you keep that thing running, Chet? See you at supper. Stay out of trouble. Lawrence, Mr. Phillips, fight for the Lord of the night. Get out of there, pup. Beat it, you little rascal. You 